Moving on to part B, it asks, at what rate is R of t changing at time t? And at first glance, it may seem like we just did this in part A, but I want you to pay very close attention to the wording of this. Let's go back and look at part A real quick. Part A asks, is at what rate R of t? Meaning the rate is R of t. So when we compute the R of t equation, that's going to give us our rate equation. So that's what this is saying here. Rate and R of t are one and the same. Then when we move on to part B, it says at what rate is R of t? So it's saying we're going to take the R of t equation and we're going to find the rate of it. Well, since R of t was the derivative of my c equation, in this problem, we're going to find R prime of t, or the second derivative of our c equation. So in the first question, it asks, what is rate? What is R of t? And in this part, it asks, what is the rate of R of t? Since we computed the first derivative in part A, let's go ahead and pull that back up. So we have that here in both the format where my numerator is expanded out and in the format where my numerator is factored. We need to know which one of these is going to be easier to take the derivative of when we're trying to compute the next derivative. So r prime of t or the same thing as c double prime of t. Well, we see that there is a fraction involved, so we're definitely going to have to do the quotient rule. But if you see it written in this format, you might think that you have to do a multiplication rule as well because there is multiplication involved. But we have that constant multiple rule, which says if my multiplication is just by a constant, we can actually pull that constant out to the side and ignore it while we're taking the rest of the derivative. So that's what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to rewrite this as negative 5 times, and then my fraction, where I have 8t squared minus 9 in the numerator. And in the denominator, do I want to keep it in its factored format like this here? Why do I want to expand it and FOIL it out? Well, in some parts, it's going to be better to keep it in its factored format like this. And in some parts, it's going to be better to put it in its expanded format. So let's go ahead and do that. If I were to FOIL my denominator, 8t squared times 8t squared in my first would give me 64t to the fourth. Outside would give me a 72t squared. Inside would give me the same. So together, that gave me a 144t squared. And then last, my 9 times 9 would give me an 81. And so now I can think about it in this format as well, where I have my constant on the outside, so I don't have to worry about taking the derivative of it, and then my expanded format on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to keep my constant on the outside, just don't lose it in the rest of the problem, and now I have the derivative of my fraction here. So we know the derivative of a quotient is low d high, minus high d low. So low d high, original of the low. Well, it's actually going to be better to keep my original of the low in the factored format times the derivative of the high. So I'm going to take the derivative of this here, my expanded format. And so the derivative of that gives me a 16t minus high d low. So let me keep my high as is, 8t squared minus 9d low, so the derivative of my low. And that's why I expanded this out, because at this time, it's actually easier to take the derivative of my expanded format. Now, we do have one more rule to learn, the chain rule. And so once you do that, it would probably be better to keep it in the other format. But until we get there, this is going to be the easier way to think about it. So the derivative of my denominator, 64 times 4 gives me 256 t to the third, plus 144 times 2 gives me 288t. And the derivative of an 81, that's the derivative of a constant, so that disappears. All over the original of my bottom squared. Factored format is best, so my original of my bottom was 8t squared plus 9 squared, 
and then I need to square it yet again. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this, keeping my negative 5 on the outside. Let me talk about the denominator first because it's the easier one. When I have something to a power to a power, I can just multiply those exponents. And so that's going to give me 8t squared plus 9 to the fourth. In my numerator, I want to keep it as is. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the order. But if you didn't do it, it wouldn't hurt you any. And back here, what I want to do is I want to factor this piece. Now, typically, we're used to multiplying everything out and expanding it. But if we do that here, that gives us large numbers and large exponents. And so when it goes to simplify it past that point, it becomes extremely difficult. So instead of expanding everything, we want to do the opposite fashion. We want to factor everything. So factoring that here, after I copy down my 8t squared minus 9, I have a common factor in there of 32t. If I take that out, that leaves me with 8t squared plus 9. So now what we see is we have a term here and we have a term here. What we want to do is we want to keep with the factoring theme and we want to take out our common factor between each of these two terms. So I copy down my negative 5, don't lose it through the problem. So between those two terms, I have a 16t here and I have a something very similar, a 32t there. So instead of writing it as 32t, let me just go ahead and write it as 2 times 16t, because then my factors will match exactly. So I know both of these green units have a 16t in common, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. Also, I notice that they have an 8t squared plus 9. My first unit has two of them. My second unit only has one of them. So I can only factor out one of these 8t squareds plus 9. So now I have to figure out what I have left between those when I have taken out my yellow and my blue. In the first, since I've taken only one of those parentheses out, that means I'm left with 8t squared plus plus 9, one of those left. In my back, I have a minus, I have my 2, and I have this 8t squared minus 9. And in the denominator, I have 8t squared plus 9 to the fourth. Looks quite messy at this point, but I promise it will get a lot better. Okay. So a couple of ways that this will get a lot better. Notice in my numerator, I have an 8t squared plus 9. And I also have an 8t squared plus 9 in the denominator. So I can cancel one of those out. So that will eliminate this one here. And that will take this one down to an exponent of 3. Also, let me simplify these brackets here. So I can do that by dropping these parentheses and by distributing that one through. Another thing that I can do is I can put these guys together here. It's multiplication, so I can multiply my fraction straight across. So negative 5 times 16t gives me a negative 80t. And then in these brackets, copying down my first unit of 8t squared plus 9, distributing my negative 2 through my second unit gives me negative 16t squared plus 18. And in the denominator, I canceled out one of those. So it gives me 18 squared plus 9 to the third. Okay, so we're almost finished here. We have a little bit more work to do. What I need to do is I just need to combine my terms in my brackets, and I'm going to switch it to parentheses. So 8t squared minus 16t squared gives me a negative 8t squared. And 9 plus 18 gives me 27. And so that is all over this 8t squared plus 9 to the third. Only one extra thing you can do if you choose to. We don't typically like my leading term negative. 
So I can factor a negative out of this here, and that will actually cancel with this negative there. So that will give me a positive 80t, and then switching my signs gives me an 8t squared minus 27. So I've got rid of any extra negatives that I don't need, and then just copying over my denominator. And so this is the most simplified version of our answer here. Well, the question is, is what did we actually compute? Well, we computed the derivative of my rate equation, or we computed the second derivative of my concentration equation. So I have copied this back up here to what the problem specifically asked. And what it asks for is what is the rate of the rate. And so here is our answer for the rate of the rate. Now, let's review this again. In part A, we computed the rate equation, as we see here, whether my painkiller is increasing or decreasing at this time. And in this equation, we computed the second derivative, which is similar to the acceleration, which is talking about whether it is speeding up or slowing down at this time. And that finishes part A and part B of this example here.